This was me five months ago as an overweight vegan, trying my best to keep up with so many different rules, stressing out, giving up, and then of course starting again, blaming myself that I just couldn't get it right when it seemed like everyone else could. I decided to make a big change in my life and just five months later, I am down 36 pounds and my life has completely changed. Sometimes it requires breaking the rules and tweaking things to your own needs to finally get it right. Fast forward to now, I am so much more flexible with my eating. It doesn't consume my life the way that it did or take a mental space the way that it used to. And I feel like I'm finally doing what works for me. I am finally reuniting with the true version of myself. It's funny how losing weight doesn't only change your body, but how it literally changes your entire life. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the rules that I had to break in order to lose the weight. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Stasia and I have recently lost 36 pounds following a whole food plant-based diet in the past few months. Now, this has not always been easy for me. I've been following a plant-based diet for many, many years and it's not until recently that I've finally been able to get the weight to shift. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the rules that I don't follow within this whole food plant-based community that actually has been the key to losing the weight. I am looking forward to today's video. I have a lot of good stuff to share here, but before we jump into today's video, let's talk about the obvious that it is Black Friday. So in the spirit of Black Friday, I am also going to be giving you guys an awesome sale on all of my weight loss recipe eBooks including my brand new one that I just launched just over a month ago. All of my weight loss recipe eBooks for the whole weekend are only going to be $5 all of them. So even if you haven't eliminated those overt fats and you're still enjoying some in small amounts, even my other weight loss recipe eBooks that are filled with awesome recipes are on sale for $5. Now I have run this $5 sale a couple times in the past and I know a lot of you really appreciated it and really loved it. And a few of you were upset that you missed it. So I just want to throw that out there that this will be the lowest price my books will ever be. So if you haven't had a chance to grab a copy of any of my books, then now would definitely be your chance. For those of you who might be landing on my channel for the very first time, I have recently lost 36 pounds in the last five months by eliminating my overt fats, such as nuts, seeds, olives, oils, nut butters, you know, any of those types of higher fat plant-based foods. And by eliminating them, I have finally started to lose weight. It has been such an eye-opener and such an awesome experience that I put together a collection of all my exact recipes that I was eating to get the initial, you know, 30 pounds or so off. And these are still the recipes I'm continuing to eat to get the rest of the weight off. My newest ebook is quite literally like a blueprint to how I got the weight off. So at any rate, if you're interested in checking out any of those books, then I will have the link to them posted in my description box below. So happy Black Friday shopping, everyone. Stay safe out there, and I hope you guys find some great deals. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a backstory about kind of how my journey started in the first place, and that was by starting off following the starch solution. So if you actually go back to my very first video ever on YouTube, I started my channel wanting to showcase my experience following the starch solution. So when I was doing that, I was actually, you know, really heavy on the starches and starches first and just all of my meals kind of being starch based. And then as time went on, I started to switch things up and I started to follow the starch solution a little bit more loosely. And that's when I started to include some nuts and seeds and, you know, didn't really think it was that big of a deal. Before I continue and really get into things, I just want to pause for one moment to just say, I want to give my thanks to Dr. McDougall, you know, the starch solution and all of his teachings. He is the one that opened my eyes to this way of eating. In fact, I had never even heard about it before finding the starch solution. You know, I knew about plant-based eating, about vegan, but I never had heard of an oil-free whole food plant-based diet. So Dr. McDougall's book, The Starch Solution, was the first of its kind, you know, to open my eyes to this specific way of eating. So I have a lot of respect for him and a lot of thanks for helping me find my forever way of eating. So while I no longer follow the starch solution and obviously have my certain opinions and experiences from it, I don't want that to be confused with the fact that I do have a lot of respect for Dr. McDougall as well as the starch solution. So I just wanted to make that point very crystal clear. 
All right, so let's get into the juicy stuff. You know, the rules that I no longer follow because the rebel that I am. No, I'm just kidding. Well, to start off, the first rule that I don't follow anymore is that I just don't follow rules. <laughs> it just really hasn't worked out all that great for me. Many, many, many times, too many times, I have tried to follow some type of, you know, set of strict rules, you know, eat by this time or not by that time or eat this, don't eat that. Certain days eat this, certain days don't eat that. Like it just, you know what I'm talking about. It's just overwhelming and there's a ton of different ways to eat out there, you know, by following certain rules and all of that. And I have tried probably 99.9% .9 of them. So that is definitely something that I have stopped doing in general is just kind of following any one set of rules. What I've done is what I consider, you know, kind of the best way. And I've just kind of grabbed what I consider to be the best options for myself, the best information that I could find. And that just made the most sense to me and just kind of, you know, implemented a bunch of different things that I felt suited me best. I always say that health and weight loss is not a one size fits all type of thing. And I really, really, truly believe that because while someone else might have super success following something to the T, that doesn't necessarily mean that every single person is going to have that same success. And that was something that I kind of had to learn the hard way for myself. So once I kind of was able to fine tune it more to my specific needs and wants, then that's when, you know, I was really able to start to see some things start happening. So the first real rule that I kind of broke within the whole food plant-based community are smoothies. So smoothies is kind of a hot topic, or at least it used to be. Um, since Dr. Brooke Goldner kind of came into the scene and became more popular, I think people are backing off of, you know, not wanting to do smoothies um, just because her protocol has had tremendous success in both weight loss and health healing, like some very crazy, crazy situations um, so I think that there's a lot of evidence just even through her protocol that, you know, we shouldn't be too afraid of smoothies. However, prior to Dr. Brooke Goldner, I feel like smoothies was like this, you know, taboo thing. We don't talk about it. You don't do it. And the moment you did say that you were having a smoothie or, you know, someone was showing it in a, what I eat in a day, you had a lot of keyboard warriors in the comments, you know, just telling you how calorie dense it is, how it's too sweet for you, how, you know, it's not going to keep you full. The doctors recommend don't having smoothies. You know, there's just a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of people get attacked online for having smoothies. Now, the thing is with me is that I feel like smoothies are a really convenient way to get in a lot of nutrition. So like anything, even with cooking, the same rules apply for smoothies. You have to still be mindful of using calorie dilute type of ingredients rather than calorie dense type of ingredients. So if you are packing a smoothie with nuts and seeds and avocados and, you know, uh, sugar filled plant based milks and those types of things, of course, you could very easily wind up with a five, six, seven hundred calorie smoothie. So that's just like our cooking, though. It's all the same thing. But if you're building a green smoothie, you know, and you're using kale and half of a banana and some berries and absolutely no nuts and seeds and water as opposed to any type of milk, then you're going to be having a green smoothie that is almost next to nothing in calories. So there's a very, very big difference there. And like I said, it's just for me, it's no different than cooking. You just need to be mindful that you're not making your smoothie too calorie dense. The other thing with smoothies is I drink them slower. So with smoothies, you don't want to inhale them because it is a lot of food going into your stomach you know, a lot easier than if you were to be sitting in front of a plate chewing it. So you also have to be mindful of that. But I think with those things considered, there is nothing wrong with smoothies at all. And in fact, a lot of my weight has been lost, as a lot of you who follow me know, by drinking my fiber protein shakes. And these shakes have been an incredible part to my weight loss. I basically have one every day. That is my breakfast. And, you know, if I had listened to the rule of like no smoothies, they're not good for weight loss, they're too calorie dense, all the different things we've heard about smoothies, then maybe I wouldn't even be sitting here right now to tell my story about how I've been able to get this weight off because that is how tremendous those protein shakes of mine have been in losing this weight. They've been a great source of fiber, of protein, and they just give me the energy boost I need, especially when I don't have something prepared or I'm running out the door or I just don't feel like cooking. You know, they've been a really, really awesome type of quick fix for me that really has helped to keep me on track. 
I love my fiber protein shakes, and in fact, I'm experimenting with the flavors even a little bit more. But for those of you who don't know about these fiber protein shakes, maybe it's your first time seeing one of my videos, I have flavors like birthday cake flavor, Snickers, Reese's Pieces Buttercup. I've got seven days worth of flavors that I alternate between all of them. They are so, so delicious. So if you wanna check out these flavors, I do have a video where I show all of my fiber protein shakes as well as you can find them in my brand new weight loss recipe ebook. There's a whole chapter with the recipes included in there. So for me, smoothies, shakes, you know, they are not the enemy. They have been in fact on my side. <laughs> they have been on the winning team this time around. So I definitely don't buy into the whole, don't have a smoothie, don't have these shakes. I think as long as, like I said, you're mindful of how you're preparing them and the ingredients that you're using in them, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And in fact, they can actually be quite beneficial to both our health and weight loss. All right, so the next rule that I really have not broke myself, but it is something that I absolutely would break and I feel that others should feel totally comfortable in breaking this rule as well if you feel that, you know, the shoe fits. So, and that is calorie counting. Calorie counting is probably single-handedly the biggest taboo topic within the whole food plant-based community. And it's always kind of blown my mind as to why. I look at calorie counting, you know, just like I look at the 50-50 plate or preloading or any of these tools that are there to assist us to make life a lot easier in losing weight. So I look at calorie counting no different than that. And I feel like for some, their personality types, the way that they want to stay organized or if they're very calculated and they want to know the specifics of what they're eating, of, you know, what they're burning, all of those things. There's nothing wrong with tracking your food if that's something you enjoy doing. Now, there's another camp that absolutely hates to calorie count and that's totally fine too. And that's the beauty of following a whole food plant-based diet is that we are eating a lot of low calorie dense foods in the first place. So more often than not, you don't even need to count calories because the weight's gonna come off anyways. So this is a more happier, sustainable way of living life without having to track everything going in your mouth. And I think that that's where the excitement comes over calorie counting is that in this way of eating, you don't necessarily have to, that's the beauty of it. But let's press the pause button on that one as well. That's not to say that you can't calorie count or that you shouldn't calorie count. There's nothing wrong with it. It's literally just another tool. So if you're struggling with losing weight, you don't know exactly what the reason is, that can actually be quite beneficial to you to be able to track your food, even if it's just for a couple of days, just to maybe pinpoint where you might be going wrong. That reminds me, I actually just received a text from my brother this morning. Um, he does not follow a plant-based diet by any means. We could not be polar opposite. It's almost comical, but at any rate, we do share the love of you know health and wellness and all of that. So he texts me this morning and says that he started to calorie count and he's never done this in his life and how he's absolutely loving it and how he's mind blown over the fact of how many extra calories he was consuming even though he was eating healthy. And I said, wow, this is exactly what I try to share all the time on my channel is that eating healthy is not necessarily synonymous with losing weight. And a lot of us, including myself, have had to learn this the hard way. We go into you know, a healthier lifestyle, healthier way of eating and thinking that just because I've switched my foods and now I'm eating healthy, that that automatically means that the weight is just gonna start flying off. And that can just be so misleading and so far from the truth. You have to be in a calorie deficit. So if you're unsure, if you are in a calorie deficit, then calorie counting could be the exact thing Thing you need in order to figure that part out. If you are unaware of how many calories certain foods contain, you might actually be very pleasantly surprised to find out how much you're consuming, you know, especially if you're kind of hitting a roadblock in your weight loss journey. So a lot of you guys always ask me if I calorie count and I don't, I have not calorie counted at all to get this weight off. But with that being said, if I all of a sudden hit a roadblock and I wasn't sure exactly what was going on, I absolutely would throw on the calorie tracker, even just for a couple days or a week or for as long as I want, truthfully speaking, you know, until I felt comfortable that I had things under control again. So please don't let other people out there discourage you from calorie counting or make you feel less than or come at you on the internet if you start saying that you're tracking calories. 
it's just craziness as far as I'm concerned. It really doesn't make one bit of a difference. There's no difference between calorie counting or 50-50 plate if that's what you prefer. It's literally just a weight loss tool, my friends. That's it. All right, so my next rule that I no longer follow, and this is a huge one, is that I don't eat as much as I want. I've talked a lot about this in my recent videos because this also might be the thing that really held me back from ever losing weight. So coming into a whole food plant-based diet, an oil-free whole food plant-based diet, we often hear that we can eat as much as we want. And going back to what I was just saying, so we hear this and then we also have it in our head that, well, I'm eating a lot healthier than what I just was. So obviously the weight should just start flying off, right? It doesn't work because at the end of the day, you have to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. So if you're anything like I was, you know, eating as much as I want sometimes fell in the categories of boredom eating, stress eating, emotionally eating, socially eating. You know, there's a lot of other reasons why we eat other than when we're actually hungry, unfortunately so. But when you've struggled with your weight, these are more than likely some of your issues. So someone like myself hearing that, I can eat as much as I want as long as I'm eating X, Y, Z for my foods, then it doesn't really matter. The weight's still going to come flying off and that can be really dangerous territory. And it was for me. So please keep in mind that you still have to tread lightly with the whole eat as much as you want. You're supposed to eat until, you know, you're almost full and then stop. And that also doesn't include tons of snacking and whatnot throughout the other parts of the day. Sorry, I had to switch positions. My back was really starting to hurt. But at any rate, you might be really hard pressed to get the weight off if you still believe that you can honestly eat as much as you want without being mindful of calories. I really wish I did not take that so literally speaking, you know, because I was a volume eater by nature, a stress eater, an emotional eater, all of these things. So really believing that I could eat as much as I want as long as it was, you know, the on plan stuff that I would still lose weight. It just, it really, really held me back for a long time. So I can't stress this one. Now I know better. Now I understand, you know, regardless of what we're putting in our mouth, you still always have to be in a calorie deficit, regardless of how you achieve that. You have to be in a calorie deficit if you want to lose weight. All right. So another rule that I've broken and I would continue to break is the whole limiting fruit. So in my experience, Fruit is not the reason why I'm overweight and fruit has never been the reason to stall my weight loss. I always consume a lot of fruit, even during this past five months that I've lost this weight. I eat as much fruit as I want. Now, with that being said, we're not being ridiculous about it. I don't mean, you know, just eating fruit nonstop all day long, all night long. Again, with some common sense and moderation, but I do eat as much fruit as I want. I don't limit myself. So for example, two days ago, I was at my mom's house. I brought a whole cantaloupe with me. I finished that cantaloupe before the end of the day. So that's what I'm talking about. I will eat a lot or maybe I'll just have one apple or, you know, one banana or two bananas. It really doesn't matter to me. I don't calculate the fruit. I just eat the fruit as I want to eat the fruit and it's never been an issue for me. I know that a lot of people really struggle with this concept because the first thing they're going to say is the sugar, the sugar, the sugar. I just had all of my blood work done at my doctor's and my blood sugar levels are perfectly fine. So that's where I can't really get into these debates with people because I'm living walking proof of my own experience that fruit has never hindered my weight loss or has it hurt my blood sugar levels. So for me, fruit's not an issue. So that is something that I will always break that rule no matter what I'm following because I love fruit, fruit loves me, so no issues. All right, so let's get on to the next rule that I broke and I'm really happy I did because this was also something holding me back. But I just wanna apologize if the lighting is not that great because the sun is going down very, very early and it's got dark in here all of a sudden. But at any rate, the next rule that I broke was by filling up mostly on starches rather than the non-starchy vegetables. So I actually flipped that around. So now my filler foods are the non-starchy vegetables and then I eat my starch to make sure that I stay full. But I remember when I first started, you know, following the starch solution, the focus was very, very much on, you know, everything being starch centered. So basically, if you wanted to have fruits or vegetables, that's your business. You could or you couldn't. But the main thing, the star of the show is the starch and to eat as much of the starch as you can. So that did not work for me. And since flipping it the other way around and filling up on non-starchy vegetables in the way of like preloading or soups or salads or even just some raw veggies or fruit cut up, you know, 
filling up on those lower calorie dense foods and then making sure I also eat enough starch that I'm going to stay full, that's been the winning ticket for me. So that is the other rule that I completely broke and switched it around the other way. Okay, so another rule that I won't say that I broke, but I just never followed was the whole veggies for breakfast or even really the 50-50 plate. So I never really followed the veggies for breakfast thing. I know that it was really popular when I first jumped into this lifestyle. And even then it was just something that I wasn't really into, neither here nor there. I just didn't prefer veggies when I woke up. However, with that being said, I think it's a great strategy. Again, I'm not against anyone doing anything that they think is best for themselves. I know a lot of people loved the veggies for breakfast and it worked out tremendous for them in the sense of being able to get those extra greens and veggies and non-starchy veggies in their diet. So I'm here for it. I'm just simply saying it was just something that I didn't particularly follow myself. That's not to say that I wouldn't. I mean, if my meal, you know, called for veggies or I was craving veggies for breakfast, I'm going to have veggies for breakfast. It's just something that I didn't jump on like everyone else did at that time. And the 50-50 plate, I have used the 50-50 plate in the past. Um, I did try it out for a while, kind of following it to the T and then I just kind of loosely followed it. And even to this day when I'm building up my plate, like I loosely follow it sometimes. But I would say preloading has been more of the weight loss tool that I used. Um, I was really, really big on preloading. I haven't been preloading like I used to, although I always have it in my mind that, you know, whether it's even before, during or after, <laughs> you know, to make sure that I'm filling up on those non-starchy veggies versus too much starch. Okay, and so the last rule that, you know, I guess this, this one's not even so much a rule as it is just kind of like a suggested way of eating that I stopped following is, you know, the strong emphasis on cooked foods and not enough emphasis on including raw foods into our diet. Raw foods are amazing in healing our bodies, you know, in giving us those live enzymes that cooked food just cannot give us. So I think the happy medium, the marriage between all of the foods is, you know, enjoying our cooked starches like our potatoes, rice, our beans, and pairing that very often as we can with some type of raw vegetable, you know, getting in those salads or, you know, just some cut up raw veggies or raw fruit, Raw fruits and vegetables are amazing, amazing, amazing for our health and weight loss. And I never really understood why there wasn't more attention given to this fact. Just considering it takes a quick Google search or, you know, reading a book on someone who goes into detail about all the benefits of raw foods, you know, to know and to realize that, hey, we should be eating a lot of these in our diet, like as much as we can. So for me, like I said, I enjoy a combination of both and where I can get those green smoothies in, that's an awesome way to get in some raw fruits and vegetables, you know, or just sitting down to a bunch of fruit, Whatever the case, I'm a huge fan of getting more raw foods into my diet mixed with those cooked foods. All right, everyone. So those are all the rules that I broke over the years and, you know, that I really am happy I kind of did because it finally got me to a place where I'm able to sit here now and tell you that I've lost 36 pounds in the last five months by doing these things. And I guess the other takeaway from it is that it just goes to show that sometimes we need to fine tune and tweak things to, you know, to fit our own needs and wants. And I'm living proof of that because it's not a one size fits all, like I was saying in the beginning of this video, it really truly isn't. So don't be afraid to tweak something to your liking, you know, don't suffer through, you know, eating a certain way when you're not really enjoying it and you're just hating your life because of it. That's so unnecessary because there is going to be some type of happy medium that you can find that works for both health and weight loss, even if it's not coming directly from some book. If it's your first time landing on one of my videos and you're also trying to lose weight on a plant-based diet or you just want to follow along my journey, I would love to have you stick around. So hit that subscribe button on your way out so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, I welcome you to stick around, check out my channel. I have tons of videos explaining exactly what I've done to get this weight off. So I'm sure you will find something helpful in there. And if you're one of my followers who have been tagging along my weight loss journey, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found any Anything helpful in it and let me know in the comments if you also are a rule breaker and have done anything you know different from what everyone else is doing that has worked for you oh and don't forget about my awesome black friday special five dollars five dollars on all the books link is in the description box below thanks so much for watching everyone and we will see you in the next one